And uh, I want us to break down the scripture with our guest here in studio. His name is Bishop David Kyoko Malombe, and he's from Bible Celebration Church International. Karibu sana Thank to you. the show. Great to have you. Yes. All right. We'll be getting to meet him a little bit later on. But for now, maybe we can just begin straight away with our devotional. And uh, you can give us your reflections on handling conflict as a believer as well as the scripture that you've chosen for us today. Yeah, first of all, I would say uh, uh, when, when uh, I, I was told that we will be discussing about conflict, I, I thought it's one of the things that uh, happen daily. And that is what Jesus was addressing and he said, for sure offenses will come. So long as you are here on this earth, there will be conflicts, there will be issues, there will be things that you will find yourself into it. Mm. And then he concludes by saying, Woe to him who bringeth it them. Mm. But together with that, when I look at it, I, I find that if Jesus said it, being our Lord, being our Savior, mm. it means that we need to be prepared on how to deal with them. When the offense come, when things happen, how do you deal with them? Mm -hmm. And that is what I will be diving into, discussing and showing ways on how to handle the conflicts and how to overcome them. Okay. Because they have to come, they will all to come. Yes. Things will happen. Yeah. You may disagree with your spouse, you may disagree with your children, you may disagree with the people around you, if you are in the church, the same in government. Mm. But the question is, how do you deal with them? Because when they come, they may make you better or bitter. Right. But the way you deal with them, it will depend on the outcome of them. Okay. Because everything is meant for good. There's nothing. Somebody said a very powerful statement. He said, in every negative thing, there is equal or greater positive outcome. Mm. It is all a matter of how you look at it. I like that. Equal or greater. All greater. Yeah. So long as you are able to understand and to see how you can dig out of it. All right. Yeah. So that's a good starting point for us to understand that um, these conflicts will happen. So yes. it's not abnormal for them to happen. You shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, feel that your relationship is wrong or yes. because there is conflict, it's bound to happen even between people who love each other. Yes. Um, and so with that said, then let's dive then into how then should we handle conflict as per what Christ would would say. Yeah, there are a few things uh, that I really noted down, which I thought if we can go systematically okay. about them, they are able to help us on how to undo, okay. on how to resolve them. Okay. Because first of all, a conflict is a clash, yeah. is a disagreement, yeah. is something that happens daily. Sure. I have found it, I've been uh, uh, from the place I work, from the ministry, from relationships, I have discovered that many major troubles and problems, mm. they are caused basically because of people not understanding on how to deal with the conflicts. Okay. When they clash, when they disagree, yeah. even some people are not married today mm -hmm. just because of conflict. And not handling it properly. And not handling it properly. So we need to see how do we handle it so that at the end of the day, that conflict becomes healthy conflict. Okay. Because there are health conflicts and then there are those conflicts that if they are not dealt with, they become very hazardous, sure. very dangerous. Sure. Okay, let's do this actually. Mm. Let's take a break at this point. I think this yeah. will be a good point for us to take a break. Mm. And then when we come back, we'll go straight into the different pointers after you've told us a bit about yourself. Yes. We'll start going through them one by one, ways in which to handle conflict yeah. that I'd say God would approve of. And I'd love to hear from you guys well, mm. too. Maybe there's ways you've handled conflict in the past. You can let me know what those are. Let me know if they worked for you or against you. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. You can also reach me on social media at Switch TV KE on Instagram, at Switch TV Kenya on Facebook and Twitter. And be sure to follow me along at Joyce Mwandi on those platforms. We'll be back after this.
Hey guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with my guest and I'll be uh, having him introduce himself again in just a little bit and tell us a bit about his ministry as well before we dive back into our topic. Today we're asking how do you handle conflict and um, you know what is God's way of handling conflict? Are you the eye for an eye type of person? Are you a pacifist? I'd love to know what has or hasn't worked for you before in the past. Shout out to those of you engaging with me on Facebook. Kamal Gitari Watumaini, you're watching. Um, um, Asante Sana from Central Naivasha. Um, that's, I also have Kagwathi Kamau who says, not at all, I am a peace lover. Bella Mia says, not really, I'm some sort of peacemaker. And um, Ibrahim Salim is watching the show as well, says, hey, Mambo VP Joyce. Um, Mies Jambo, I'm totally fine watching you from Likoni, Mombasa. Asante Sana, Ibrahim, for watching the show. I have Dennis Otachi Alfred as well, watching from Garden City. And I also have Jane Murani, who says, Good morning, watching from Kabonge, Kirinyaga. I am an eye for an eye type. Why lie? That's me. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your honesty there. And you guys can keep your feedback coming in to double two, triple nine. And uh, with me once again, we have with us Bishop David Kyoko Malombe. And he's from uh, Bible Celebration Church International. Kaributana to the show. Okay. And um, we're going to be diving into what you have as seven sort of ways. Yes. Um, so. You could call them biblically described or prescribed yes. ways to handle conflict. Yeah. But before we do that, maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself and, and ministry, Bible Celebration Church. Yeah, as you have heard, my name is David Malombe Kyoko from Kitui. I was born and raised in Kitui in a village called Kunguluni, mm -hmm. which when we began the ministry, we changed it and we began to call it Gosheni. Okay. Because the, that name Kunguluni was not very good. So okay. by faith, we, we transformed the place. All right. uh, I went and I'm trained as, a, as an engineer, mm -hmm. but uh, I gave my life to Jesus when I was a small boy in primary school. Mm. And I began to minister to preach in primary school, secondary school, college. Wow. And the Lord has been so good. I am not ashamed of him. Just like Paul says, I'm yeah. not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. For it is the power of God and to salvation. Wow. Then from there, around 2006, I began the ministry, which the Lord really spoke to me through a dream okay. of that village, which was left without uh, any church. Mm. And by the grace of God, I used, because I'm in Nairobi, my wife works with the day star. I used to feel like in Kitui and then doing mission, staying in Nairobi and doing mission in Kitui is so hard. Mm -hmm. So I was praying God to get somebody in Kitui who can do the work. Maybe I continue doing the work of the Lord in Nairobi. All but right. the Lord told me, you are the one I have appointed and okay. the grace is sufficient. And for the last more than 10 years, we have been driving every weekend to Kitui wow. to minister in the village, not in the town. Wow. And the amazing. Lord has been doing great things. That's amazing. And by the grace of God, I have I oversee around 20 churches across the country. Wow. Yeah. And wow. Glory God. to God for that. Amen. And thank you very much for making the time. That is yeah. quite a sacrifice. Amen. Nairobi Amen. to Kitui every, yeah. every weekend. But yeah. God bless you. And I'm sure the community is grateful as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's dive back into our topic then here on handling conflict. Um, yeah. What would you say is one of the ways, the first way in which we can actually do this um, mm. according to scripture? Yeah. One of the things we need to understand is conflict must come. We used to have a saying in Kamba language, which says, when the ions, all axes are put together, they will always make sound. Mm -hmm. So because we know that there will be conflict, it's very important to understand how do we handle them. Sure. And the first thing that we have to do is to confront the issue. Okay. That, I, I say, take the initiative. Some of us, the way we have been raised up, we have been raised up uh, in a very strict way whereby we cannot even share our feelings. <clears throat> we cannot even say what we are feeling because the parents by then, they were so strict and mm -hmm. so tough. So you find there are people, even up to now, that they are not able to say what they are going through. Okay. I, some say, me, I just want peace. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is they are hurting. Right. And they the best... Confronted. Yes. They, 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 they are going through tough time within themselves. And life is, uh, Jesus came that we may, have, we may have freedom. He came that we may know the truth and the truth may set us free. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that you have to do 
if somebody has hurt you or has wronged you, he might have not meant to wrong you, but you who is being wronged, one of the things you have to do is to confront. All right. We usually say, what you cannot confront, you can't conquer. Mm -hmm. And what you cannot conquer, you cannot control. Okay. So okay. take the fears away and tell your partner. And how you say it is very important. Say, you don't say you. You begin with yourself. Mm -hmm. You say, my dear or my friend or my son, when you did this, it didn't make me good. Let's discuss it. So the moment you, you, you take initiative, that you begin a road, you begin a way, a path of being able to solve the, the whole conflict. All right. But when you keep it to yourself, you're not helping yourself and you're not helping the partner. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to the second one then. The second thing you do after you have confronted that issue is you need to focus on the good, on the goals that are bigger than your disagreement. Mm. There are people who so much, uh, they, they always look at the conflict and major on the conflict. Instead they magnify of, it. They magnify it. Instead of looking at the establishing the relationship. The moment you know that, for example, if you're married and you know that this marriage is bigger than the few things, the few mistakes, the mm -hmm. few misunderstandings that uh, have come up because of disagreement, mm -hmm. then it will make you to feel that the disagreement should not stop you from establishing the relationship. Mm -hmm. So look at, see the bigger picture, establish the uh, relationship, established relationship is more important than any disagreement. Right. If you focus on your conflict, it will be very hard to reach an agreement. Mm -hmm. And that is what in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 says, make effort, make every effort to keep the unity of spirit through the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, after you confront, after you take the initiative, then let your focus not be on the conflict. Right. Let it be on what you will achieve. Right. Yeah. And this I will say out of experience. Uh, we, we, For example, me and my wife, we have been married for around 22 years. And we have learned that keeping things in ourselves, we lie to ourselves. I have come to discover most of this agreement, people, they don't do it intentionally. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of communication. Mm -hmm. But now when you measure on your relationship, you say this thing, this relationship... Even with the children, mm -hmm. all in your workplace, it's very important to measure on what the outcome, what right. you can get out of this relationship. Great. And once you do that, it becomes very easier to solve the problem. All right. Very yeah. great point. Yeah. Uh, but in the interest of time, maybe we can move on to point number three. Point number three is be a good listener. Listen mm -hmm. attentively as the other person tells how he or, sees, he or she sees the situation. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've discovered with time, why many people don't solve their problem is because they have no listening ear. Right. You find somebody does not listen. I like somebody said, listen with your heart, with your eyes, and your, with your ears. Mm -hmm. You listen with your heart, you listen with your eyes, and you listen with your ears. And uh, basically, uh, as African, the way we are raised, many times you will find there are people who cannot listen. They have no time. You did it. I don't want to hear what you are saying. You know, you are, you know, you are too bad. You are used to doing this. You are used. And maybe the reason why he did it, even he doesn't know. Or yeah. maybe it's uh, something that needs more than just looking at it. I have found there are people, they don't do you wrong because they enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just because of how they were raised. They are thinking systems, patterns, and what have you. And if that person you do not understand him you cannot listen give him an ear to listen let mm -hmm. him talk and be be patient mm -hmm. there are people who are not patient it's like you are talking and somebody is in i know i know what you're saying i know you <laughs> don't give him attention that is required yeah. so if you are going to solve that conflict you must be attentive enough listen mm -hmm. i know there are people who are saying oh Bishop, what you're talking about, you don't know my partner, or you don't know my spouse, or you don't know my children. Right. I discovered even children, they have a right to be listened to. Mm -hmm. There are children who commit suicide because nobody listened to them. Mm. Try to imagine. Mm -hmm. Because nobody gave them audience 
to listen to them. Mm. So whatever you are dealing, when you are dealing with conflict, be prepared. Okay. Even if it takes a whole day, be ready. All Give right. your partner time to share his things, his feelings, what he's going through. And the moment you give that your partner or the person you have conflicted with time, out of that conflict, you may get something that will be you have never known before. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to number four. And number four is validate the person's feeling without, uh, without minimizing our concerns. Mm. Validate. There are people, because of how we are, become so easy to just... Unasema potelea bali. All, it's why are you so kiddies? You are so childish. Why? Mm. How could that thing hurt you? Me, I just <laughs> say that something so small. What's wrong with you? Are you a kid? Am I dealing with a kid? Right. <laughs> no. It, it, to you, it may look very small. But to that person, because it hurt him, all it hurt her, it looks major. Mm. So validate it. Try to show him that you are real. Before I knew this, there are times I would feel, ah, so why, what, what's wrong with this? This looks so childish. Mm. But I discovered what looks childish may not be childish to that person. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to validate, to show that really I was listening. Really, I understand. You yeah. take yours, like the way they usually say, you put yourself in your partner's Someone's shoes. shoes. Yeah. Right. So it's very important to validate what he says. And all these have scriptures which says, like in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, it says, do not answer before listening. Because that is folly. Do not answer before listening. Mm. So it's very important as you validate because you have listened. Mm. Don't just be quick to speak. Quick to nini. Right. There's a verse which I read in the morning, Proverbs 29, verse 20, which says, Do you see a person who speaks in haste, or who speaks before? There is, uh, who speaks in haste, there is more hope for a fool than for them. Mm. Anytime you have no ability to listen, you have no ability to validate, you are just talking, bra, bra, bra. You, you are not giving the other person audience. Then the Bible says, A fool is better than you than you wow. that means you you are really was and i will not condemn people speak quickly because the way you are raised determines on how you react over issues so it's very important to train yourself to change yourself mm. to make yourself to have the ability to listen and i believe that is why we usually say communication it's not just talking it's the ability to know what the other person is saying mm -hmm. and to know it the way that person put it. Sure. So, sure. if you are going to validate what your partner is going through, it means you have listened, you have understood, and you have heard him clearly okay. the way he's going through. And that is how you can be able to sort out the issues. All right. Number then five? Number five is now tell your story. Okay. You know, you are the so one... So, you, your story comes after. Uh, it comes after you. Yeah. Because, first of all, we usually say when you are initiating the whole uh, solving of the conflict, it does not mean you are the one who is bad. Mm. Okay. Even if the other person is the one who has wronged you, because you are concerned with the relationship, you are concerned with the bigger picture mm. of why you came together, of why you know one another, of why you are working together, of why you are doing business together, then you initiate. And when you initiate, you don't initiate to come and just eat the, you, you, your friend. You, you, you initiate because you are looking for a solution. You are mm. looking for a way out. Yeah. So now you have to tell your partner, now I have listened to you. I have heard what, you, what happened. I have heard what you thought I did. Even if it were me, I would have felt like you. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing all this? You are doing all this because you are looking for a solution right. for the conflict. Mm -hmm. Some conflicts are so big, some others are small. It doesn't matter what kind of conflict it is. You see? So you request, you are not calling, to, you are not summoning your partner to lecture him or her. Mm. Your, your, your bigger picture is, I want us to continue to be in a good relationship. I want to work. this relationship to work. Right. So it's very important now to request so that at the end of the day, this person, because you have listened to him all to her, then he gives you a time to begin your story. And okay. you begin your story very well. Avoid blaming your partner. Okay. 
In other words, don't assign blames. Somebody may ask, what do you mean when you say don't assign? I discovered every time you point at somebody like this, mm -hmm. it means more figures are pointing at you. Mm -hmm. There is a, one of the, the, the things that usually helps me in life is to understand everything that happens. I'm the cause of it in my life. Mm. I am 100% responsible of what happens. Mm. That means if I'm conflicting with you, there must be something either I did, mm -hmm. all I said, all I behaved mm -hmm. that triggered mm -hmm. the conflict. Right. I don't need to look at it like she is to blame. Mm -hmm. The moment we begin sorting our conflict by beginning with ourselves, myself, mm. I'm not right, you know. It makes, it essence the heart. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even bad things that you've done. Yeah. But I like that you've used the word trigger because sometimes there are people who just kind of look at you and maybe in your life they see something that they mm. once had that they don't have anymore yeah. or something that they really, really want to get and is not working out. And so if you're not self-aware yeah. and not understanding that you could be a trigger not that you've done anything bad per mm, se mm. but if you're not aware of that you'll find yourself yoko ringaying in front of them yeah and it's creating all these feelings of animosity so very important to be self-aware and hopefully that leads you to also then tone down how you behave yeah, in true. front of that person mm. absolutely yeah and sometimes even people they may say things not meaning to hurt you yeah. At all. Somebody may look at you and say, ah, you're too slim. <laughs> and you may be, you start thinking, oh, you th he thinks I'm sick. Or somebody may look at you and say, wow, you're too big, my friend. You need to slim, you know, such a thing. Eh? Yeah. And maybe this person had no intention to hurt you. So the moment you begin to look at it from the perspective of, I am also a cause yeah. of what is happening. Wow. Then you are able to sort it out. So okay. you begin the story. You begin to talk about it. Okay. In Proverbs chapter 18 verse 17 says, you may think you have one case in the court until you your opponent speaks. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. Bishop, I literally have just a couple more minutes to go. So maybe yeah. we can quickly summarize your remaining pointers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Number six, it's uh, about apology. You mm -hmm. apologize mm -hmm. and ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. for your part in the disagreement. Right. In other words, don't just wait apologize don't yeah. say i'm right or just say because that is how you saw it yeah. apologize no i'm sorry i I'm made sorry. you feel that way yes you have to swallow your pride sure and apologize because you are looking for a better uh a, a better relationship okay and then the last one is you discuss how to avoid for the uh, in the future, future mm. conflict okay yeah Wow, these were fantastic points, Bishop. I think very important for all of us to really, hopefully you've taken some notes. And uh, there's some SMSs that have been coming in. Florence from Embu is saying, I'm a peace lover, but I don't know why often I have conflicts with people. Carol, fro Carol from Omoja says, good morning, Joyce and Pastor. The show is great. I like it. God bless you. Uh, Carol from Juja says, I like our devotion segment and my great tool to solve conflict is by listening to the other party and come out with solutions. Um, someone else says, to resolve conflicts, we must submit to God. We also have to resist the devil and repent of all sin. That's Sarah from Karatina. I have Stella Nyaga, who's a big fan of the show, saying, how I handle conflict. I have one principle, never to go to bed angry. Um, I love solving my issues at that particular time and just share what I'm feeling about a particular thing because locking it in will take away your peace. I think many people here can certainly resonate um, with what you've been saying here today. In fact, one person is saying my dad and his mother and siblings had a misunderstanding. The family broke apart to date because of unsolved issues. So this is a huge issue, not just in marriage, but even in how you, we hear of brothers who don't don't speak so um, certainly important for all of us to be aware of I'd like to ask you very briefly to just pray for us um, that God would help us in this area of our lives Amen. especially if it's something that we are always going to go through Amen. Uh, before I pray I would say it's very important at the end of the day that uh, when you begin to deal with the conflicts pray mm -hmm. have time to pray with your partner if you're born again mm -hmm. if you're not born again uh, pray it's very important to pray just yeah. 
so that the Lord may help you. Let us believe God together. Father, in the name that is above every other name, we thank you that, Lord Jesus, you said that offenses must come. And, Lord, we are dealing with them day in, day out. And there are families that are broke down. There are companies that have been separated. There are uh, good friendships that have been uh, killed. They, we have, they have been done away with because of conflict. And there are so many problems that have gone on, even in our country and across the world, because of conflict. Because many times we don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Your word says, you know, getting, we must get wisdom. Because wisdom is the principal thing. I pray that, Lord, you may release wisdom upon our listeners, upon everyone. That, Lord, you may give us wisdom on how to deal with every kind of conflict. So that the conflict may become health. They may become a blessing. They may bring forth good uh, results. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the Switch TV. I declare your blessing upon the, this great TV. May you do them good. And let your name be glorified. We thank you for speaking to us. Those who are in conflict, Lord, help them. Help them to sort them out. Help them to resolve them. Let your name be glorified. And let your power take over in every issue. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. How can people find you and your ministry, your church? Are you on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on Facebook, book, uh, Bible Celebration Church. Uh, you'll find us there. All right, fantastic. And then we are in uh, Kitui, okay. in Gosheni, Kungulu, three kilometers from Kitui town. Okay. You're welcome. Thank mm. you so much. Amen. We really do appreciate you. You've been a great blessing to us today. Mm. And uh, with that said, guys, we're going to take a break now as we get ready for our next segment. Thank you, James from Starehe, for your SMS there. Dixon Sawankio watching from uh, Siokimau as well. Becky from Kiserian. Asante Nisana to all of you for your feedback on this segment. Coming up next, Masai Shuka, a belt, and that's all you need to create an outfit. We're going to be finding out more about that in the next segment. Stay tuned.